Now then, and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft 1.14.4. All the mods for with Nemson today in my garden once again. I hope you're enjoying the uh, Plant Tech 2 content. Today I'm going to cover briefly something that I'm going to be getting on with in the background. And then we're going to get on with some building today. I plan on doing some building today. Uh, but first, first of all... We need to we need to get crack down on this kind of stuff, right? This this thing that we're working on here, we're creating uh, loads and loads. Well, we're creating seeds as well, by the looks of it. We're creating loads and loads of particles. These particles are harvesting from them. The seeds are also harvesting from them because these are highly advanced crops. Well, at least these two here and these two here are highly advanced, with super huge growth speeds and the like, um, which is basically this, yeah. So we've got growth speed 10, productivity 5, fertility 5, and spread speed 10, which are the maximums. It also seems to have energy per seed 60, which also seems to be the maximum. So it's got a few maximums in it. That one's exactly the same, but the different uh, dantium and canicum, right? Dantium and canicum. And those have been then replanted here as well. So this middle one should be a new seed that could be a crossbreed of the two. Now, I haven't been doing it this long-winded way to get these white, right? Um, but I am getting a lot of fertility from these. Fertility 5 gives us more seeds back. And Productivity 5 gives us more particles back. So I'm getting quite a lot of particles. At the minute, I want loads and loads of dantium particles. So I laid up some of these to copy the seeds. So all of these are the same the same 10, 5, 5, 10 seeds as these. And these are all now just kind of here for a production line to get me as many particles as possible. It's also going to give me more seeds back, which I wasn't particularly in need of, but I'm getting all the seeds back as well. And so then I can throw that into there, throw that into there. That's actually some un unchallenged ones or unknown ones. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's all about getting these particles, getting as many of these particles as I can to get as much dantium stock as I can to stockpile it so that I can build a load of more machines that require the DNA uh, remover. Um, well, I need a load more DNA removers. There's a very, very simple reason for this, and I shall sort this out in this way. Put that in there, do that in there, which is good. Put the rest of the particles away. Down there, and there, and there. There's quite a lot of uh, dantium now. That's good. So it's producing lots and lots of particles, which will produce me lots and lots of ingots, which will produce me lots and lots of gears, which will then produce me lots and lots of infused gears, which will then create plenty of DNA removers. I want a little chain of DNA removers so that I can process faster something I do in here. So let me show you. Let me give you an idea of what it is that I'm doing. And then we can work on that in the background and you know what's happening. So, so far I've done the canicum and I've done the dantium. I still need to do this kinoleum. Kinoleum. So we're going to take everything off these sticks here. And these should be the basics. Should be just basic seeds. Yeah. Uh, one with one fertility. Okay, there's one fertility. Right. No big deal. Though. No big deal. Um, we're going to remove everything. Uh, let's go with that. We're going to remove everything. Wow, so many particles. Um, everything except for what we got. Let's dump them in there out of the way. We're going to remove everything by putting them through this DNA extractor. And then we can have a good run. We've got two already up by the automation thing, so we don't need to worry about that. Get six of these. Do I have six of these? No, I've only got three. I do need to make some more because I've got so many here. Um, I managed to get the carrots bred up until I ended up with the maximum growth speed, productivity, fertility, and spreading speed. And then I've duplicated all of that so that I ended up with all of the individual DNA. But I'm going to show you how to get the individuals now so that we can get the type. Because it's important to now get the type so I can um, combine the type with the basic genome. So what we're going to have to do is take all of these five out. I'm going to take all five out at once, right? Because we want to get the kinoleum, kino, kinoium, 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 <laughs> the kinoium. We're going to have to get the kinoium. So we're going to do this twice, three times. We're going to do it three times and see how we get on. I need to make some more of those though. So next up, we'll put them all into the DNA remover. Now, 
each time it goes to the DNA remover, it's going to oh. randomly choose any one of those traits and take it away. Now, we want to keep the type. So at the minute, that one's keeping the type. That's good. I'm going to do this a few times. And what I want to get is a sequence of DNA removers. So this would happen automatically for me. I put some seeds into uh, an extractor with a load of empty DNA containers. And then from there, it will go into the remover and it will go through a chain of removers to remove everything we can and hopefully get down to the, the type. So I can re we can do the type without me standing here doing this all the time. Because while it's worthwhile for doing it for the first few times, it's very, very monotonous, as you're about to see. I'm only going to show you once, you see. I'm only going to show you once. So do we still have the type? Yes, we do. Okay. So we just keep going through all three. For now, we'll do it as three. Um, there's more and more chance that I'm going to lose the type the further we go through the process. So at the moment, we've got a... Um, four, we've got an eight. We've got a one in eight chance of it going wrong for each of these samples. One in eight chance is still good. That one was the lost out. One in nine chance. So now that one's a dud. So that one's now going to die off. The other two, I'm going to have to keep. So that one can clean it. This one, now until I run out of seeds, I've got three in there at the minute. Until I run out of seeds, this process can continue. Okay, so from my three samples, well, all the seeds actually, I used all of the seed samples. So from all of my seed samples, I ended up with two that had three tags. Um, the type, this one in level, uh, light level and spread speed. This one was sensitivity and energy. This one just lost its type, which means it's useless to me. And this one lost its type um, in a one in six chance. This one lost in a one in three chance. This one, I don't want to take that one in three chance. I want to lose the one in three chance for something better odds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the combiner. It's currently a one in three chance. And I've got light level and spread speed still on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find spread speed. Uh, or I could find light level. It doesn't really matter. Light level or spread speed, whichever you've got available at the time. I'd put that in to combine it. And then take an empty, take an empty, and basically duplicate this particular container. So spread speed zero will come through because spread speed ten can't. Uh, I don't want to delete this ever. It's my sample now forever. But this now gives me a one in three chance of getting the type that I want every time I run it through the machine until I get a one in two chance. Do I get a one in two chance? 50-50. So now I've got a 50-50 chance, right? Let's get that one out of there. Put that one in there, okay? So now I've got a 50-50 chance of getting the one that I want. I can get rid of these. I might as well I might as well just run it through there just to see if I get anything because it might not. It might I get an empty out of this one. May as well. And then get that one ready for a 50-50 chance. That one there's a 50-50 chance, so they get the 50-50 on there. Put that in there. Make another one 50-50. This will probably come out right now. Yeah, so it's a 50-50. That's my dog wagging his tail. And failed. 50-50 failed on that one. Okay, so we get to the next one. But I don't have to go through the whole process all over again. I can just keep recycling the uh, the, the jars until the 50-50 comes out in my favour. Well, it took another couple of tries. All of my uh, morning sunshine in order to get the type correct. So now we can get rid of these two. The spreading speed I will put back into there to keep make sure I've got that set. And this I would put there with these ones. So I've now got those types. But what I want to do is combine those two together in this format here. So we're combining those two together in order to make the type we want. So I no longer need that. I can get rid of that one. And I can put this through here. So now I'm going to end up with the Kinoleum with all of those high stats in here. Output achieved. And then I can put that through the seed creator and that will use some biomass to create a seed that is that filling in the uh, other types with default values. The other things aren't currently implemented in the game so there's hardly any worries whatsoever about having sensitivity zero, water range one is implemented, gene strength zero, not implemented yet. And I haven't been able to uh, make that bigger anyway. 
So we do this just twice, so I get two seeds started, and then I can start um, like harvesting more from that. So I'll take that out, put that into there, and then I'm sticking this away to keep it nice and safe, nice safekeeping for those containers so I can make more if I need. And then I'll come up here and I will set it up so that we've got the first two of these set up and run in here. So now these will grow fairly quickly because they've got a high growth speed and then the middle will potentially yield something better so that'll be an unknown type yeah so that's potentially some better but look how many particles I got off that I've got almost one full ingot off these because of the productivity of them um, so there was seven off one and six off the other that's just one harvest of those uh, and then once I've got those seeds upgraded here I will take a version of these two and I will transplant it into this setup so that I've got, um, yeah, the maximum potential income from all this lot. But to do all that, of course, I need loads and loads of DNA removers. And then I can go through and make all of the other seed types, all the perfect seed type all the way through. Um, but I need to make something automated for the DNA removers. So I'm just collecting all this dantium, turn it into particles, into ingots, so I can make loads and loads of the DNA uh, removers. And then we can make a chain of that, so I don't have to stand there doing it. But for right now, let's do some building. The sun always sets so slowly when you're waiting for it to set. It's like... When you're not looking around, there it is. Uh, okay, so today I wanted to build a stables area out here. Um, I've got ideas for what I want to do and create a great big stables to put loads of horses in so you can leave all your comments down below and tell me what names you think they should be. So this is currently uh, Hercules, Hercules, uh, which was suggested by Angel Smith. Um, Cookie is going to be the next one and my king <laughs> my kingdom for a horse my kingdom for a horse has got to be done as well there's a few horses out here running wild there's a few out here running wild i'll tame those when i've got stables to put them in but what i'm thinking right according to my map this nice straight route out of here on my map looks pretty good uh, can i bring the bigger map up yeah bigger map so i've got a nice straight route down here there's a slight bend in the road there. That doesn't matter. I'll do the same on the other side of these. So there'll be a slight bend in the road here. So I'll end up with another route on there, on this side. So I kind of want to join this area at the wall here, this side of the chunk border, to make one long stables and two gatehouses. That's the plan, right? So we can end up with something that looks fairly symmetrical. This farmhouse in the middle, uh, gatehouse on either side, right? That's the plan, anyway. That's the plan. So we've got a couple of things that I'm going to do tools-wise just to pick all this up. So first of all, we put our uh, magnet axe in one hand and our sickle in the other. And we go around and we just break all of the things in this general area just so we've got all of the stuff all collected up. Magnet pick it all up. We'll level the ground. We'll make things work. I think that this is where I'm putting my road to be in line with that section. So I'm going to have to build either side of that and then either side of the other and then figure out kind of like the dimensions in between. So I'm going to clear all this out. I also managed to get myself an, an excavate, an excavate um, three when I was enchanting stuff. An excavate does a quite a large area, which can also work fairly quickly. I'm not sure why this is like feeling a bit random as it plows its way through. Not really sure how it works, but I do know it does a good area of effect and gets rid of quite a lot of stuff. Uh, so let's go. There we go. Right, so I've also got a slight rise here, so I'm going to have to bring it up a bit. I don't know how much I want to bring it up just yet, but I am going to work on getting all the foundations right first leaving a little gap here and using uh, F3G to show the chunk borders and only really want to come out this far. So from this point onwards has got to be 
kind of like the outside. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six blocks of space uh, and the inside edge here. So I've got six blocks of space plus the inside. I can expand this building so it's part of the stables and the stables can be running through between these two areas here. And uh, yeah, I'll come up with my footprint and rebuild the wall around the outside for some protection and uh, be right back to show you. All right, so making a start, we've got two gatehouses forming. So um, yeah, I've extended the temporary wall out and away. Uh, put some gatehouse walls in to start. Two very simple homes. Uh, they come up to this height, this yellow line here on all of this side, which is the same as that building there. Uh, so it's the same ground floor design as that building there, basically. That's what we're doing here with the cobblestone as the bases and we should have this um, coming across here however those look like they're going upright there so we're going to probably do something similar here instead of doing it across beams like that there is another thing that I can do as well which I might have a go at there's a druid craft thing that's going on that I might try and have a go with uh, which is changing these together now that makes that one there's, there was something. Hang on. Uses for this. There is that. There we go. Oak beams. So we've got these oak beams things, right, from Druid Craft that look quite cool. So let's see what they look like in this particular playthrough. Uh, so we put them across. Yeah, they're pretty cool. So we've got oak beams instead. They look just slightly different from those, and I can replace those easily enough from there. So we're going to end up with this is kind of like a template for the gatehouse right we're gonna have two gatehouses one this side of the gate gates here one this side of the gate right so the gate's gonna go through and so we're slightly over the border so there is the corner of the chunk that's where i've done this one and on the other side i've done exactly the same thing exactly the same thing but we're slightly higher up but i've done the same thing here so on this one the floor is going to go in here and that's going to be a too high ground floor so a too high ground floor is slightly slightly less than this because this is three high but you have to make these things work going up the hill so here we go i have to make these things work going up the hill so i've done that and then i can have the extended buildings going up off the top of all of them to make them all fairly even in between there now between these two builds here i want to have another area which is going to be the stables themselves and I've got to figure out just how many I've got so if I was working on that row there and that would make a very flat straight edge here which I don't like as well um, we would have some two four six blocks so I could have stables that side stables that side and a walkway between the two but I really wanted to go to the gatehouses don't I so I, I need to kind of get out of the stables and into the gatehouses um so i need something coming through along this way so i kind of need to think about changing this up on both of these sides so that i've got um a path like a normal a normal path for my horses to come down this is how we uh, this is how we process our building style and then this becomes a smaller room, but still, okay. Maybe a saddle room, something like that. And then we would bring this across at least here. Um, but I might try and go out one more build, just so the stables extend out slightly. Just because I don't like this flat finish. All right, so I've gone with a slightly extended version, just because um, it fits fairly neatly into this section so let's just take that off for a second so we've got too high all the way around here we've got a little gap here with some walls in just as kind of like a, a block brace between the two and we can build this up here can we build it up yes we can of course we can we're we're epic we can do anything we want um build these up this way and move it up another one just because no not that one Good at building skills. There we go. And then we've got a too high wall coming around here. And it's slightly more interesting. 
So I can get rid of these ones. And um, have the lower levels coming into here better. So I can remove these as well. Have it so it's part of the stables. That this is a couple of stable blocks. So that's a table block. Then that's a wall. Then this will be a stable block. And we will block that off like that. And so inside here we'll have another stable block. Which we'll get rid of these from. I should do it. There we go. Um, and then we've got two sticky outy builds. And two um, gatehouses. So it should, in theory, start looking good. Uh, the floor sections for these places. I want to put a little bit of coarse dirt around. So that it looks like uh, we've got like dirty areas but mostly we're gonna have um like yeah mostly we're gonna have the coarse dirt around as dirty areas and we're gonna put some hay bales down as the straw in the in the floor like right? the straw sections like that that you would have in those kind of areas where the horse would live and then we're gonna have three gates across here and then we're going to have just fences across here to make that look okay so it looks like they're little tiny stables within each one right and then i'm gonna have to get slightly higher again to get these up onto the next level um and put the beams in across so we'll go with each one of these and then beams across. I don't particularly want to do windows, I don't think. Windows at the front, I don't know yet. Um, I do want to change this all out as well. Uh, all out for andesite. So I want to have the andesite like that. But I want these bits, beams put in first from Druidcraft. They're high enough, uh, they're high enough up in the air that if Druidcraft ever had a problem, then they would just be missing as a gap in the build. And I could really quickly come along and replace all the beams. That's the plan anyway, right? Uh, so make another little section like that. So they're kind of identical buildings uh, or identical areas. And let's just have a beam here. There we go. So we're building up little blocks like this, little blocks like this to create the wall section and having some of them are going to be stables and then we'll have some stables like this for each of the horses on all different sides and a little run through here that they can uh, that they can travel through to get to the doors on the way out and then i've just got to figure that little line there to see what i'm going to have with that and make it all look good and light it all up so that we've got ins and outs there uh, do I have enough gates? Yes, I do. One, two, three. To make that good like that. Nothing can get in. I could have an, a golem stationed around here that could just come in and smack them on a chain, on a cape. Yeah, on a fence post. I could put a fence post up here somewhere. Uh, let's put like, a fence post up here. Anywhere along here and attach a golem to it. So the golem's kind of in this area. So if anything comes to the gate, the golem just smashes them. <laughs> That'll be fun as well. Automatic defences of the gates. <laughs> right, well, it's it's looking good. I've got to say, I'm enjoying playing around with it. You can tell I've been doing technical stuff for science for so long now. I'm trying to trying to have a day of just chilling building. And so far, so good. We've got these two buildings here lined up nicely in that sort of vicinity that they're starting to um, get close together. The original building I've adapted slightly. So we've taken the same design and adapted the upper floor to be spruce wood. Now the thing we have about these is they they comp they're three complementary textures, colours. Whereas on that one it was um, oak wood planks and oak wood um, roof tops. Not so good. Not what I wanted. So yeah, I've gone round and I have added in all of these sections, all of these sections that we were talking about. There's an iron golem here who is on that lead. It just doesn't look like he's on the lead right now. And he'll be defending this gate. I need to put another one on the other side. We have Angel Smith's Hercules here. Hercules. He's going there. And we've got Miss Fee Jazz Cookie. Uh, oh, Cookie's out. <laughs> Cookie went for a walk. We're going to have Chris Smith's, uh, Simpson's Mike Hingdom for her. Oh, I missed a bit there. It's a good job I've still got some bits on me, isn't it? 
Uh, I'm starting to work on the uh, ceilings, no, the rooftops. I'm trying to work on the rooftops a little bit more. So we've got all this little design on the inside of each of these stables, and I've got four stables currently here. Um, I can put more in, of course, but four stables should be all I need, really. And then we've got um, to find our ways round the place. So I've got a little little walkway of back stairs up here, which brings us up here, right? And I've also got a little stairs here, which comes down into a like a, a little room down here. So we've got a little room at this kind of basement level. Don't know what I'll put in here yet, but it's a little room. Gives me another option for getting in and getting up. And I put down something that was going to be a, a different kind of wood, acacia. So I've got acacia floors throughout. Acacia floors, and then we've got these little bridges running across between two buildings. This is the original building that we had all of this stuff in. And then I've got my bed in. That'll change the floor in that. A little around here, a little balcony. So I can have a little look out across the village. Uh, can't really see much, but I can have a little look out, see what time of day it is. Uh, more little bridge coming over here another little room area over the top of this side of the stables and then through this way and across the tops of the stables across the tops of both stables i can get in above the stables so i can store some stuff and i can also look out the window in that general direction now i decided about roofing that i would have um a, well it's a kind of a it's kind of a a a, a, a frame roof an A-frame roof on this main building here, the two stables. An A-frame where it originally was there to match in with the kind of builds that we've already got that high. And I'm still deciding what to do with these more square rooms because these square rooms will take a little bit more messing around with uh, and a lot more messing about with bits and pieces. So I'm kind of thinking I might do a flat roof at the minute. Um, so we come up one just to give us an edge. And then I'll probably just go with, um, not here, but there. Go with a flat roof kind of design across the top. Uh, like so. So flatten it off so that mobs can't spawn on the roof, but it looks kind of flat. It will be in keeping. It'll just dip in with all this kind of stuff. So it'll still fit nicely next to the other area. But we'll be okay um, to have some flat roofs. Just so we don't build it up too much, have a flat roof on this side and on this side. And just go around the outside edges, like the guttering is going to be this sort of stuff. Just have the guttering come around the side here. Just so we've got it there, like, like that. And then a little bit of that. So we've just got a bit of guttering going around and then we can put the flat roof on the top of that. So in this case, we would go flat roof there, like so. There we go. And I just have to build this up a little bit when I've got some more supplies. I kind of... I'm, I'm running pretty low on my spruce right now. My spruce is almost loose about the hoose. So we've got less and less to be able to do for now. But this is looking pretty good. I can probably finish all this off uh, over a couple of sessions. Sitting at my computer, having fun, dodging arrows. Come on, come around here, come around here. See what you got, see what you got. And uh, no. Come on, round here. Let's see if we can tempt you in. Hi. Can we tempt you in? We can tempt you in. Golem. Hey, Golem. There's somebody over here, look, to meet you. Get over there. Get over there. Get over there and beat him up. Come on, I want to see if this works. Come on. I want to see if you work. Are you working? Work on it. Come on. Okay, but well maybe nothing's actually trying to break in. And that's the thing. If these zombies come down here, look, are you going to come and smash these zombies up? Are you going to smash the zombie? Well, that didn't work quite as well as I expected. Look, zombie here. Zombie here. Zombie here. You're looking at him, but you're like, I can't get to him. I can't get to him. Why not? Why can't you get to him? What's up with that? All right, I'm going to have to figure that one out. And I maybe I have to put the uh, connection here instead. But then he might get in the way of my he might get in the way of me taking the horses out. Go to there instead. And then you're just staring through there at him. If anyone does try and get through this gate, hey, there's a pathfinding, pathfinding zombie. Look, oh, what am I paying you for? 
I'm going to stop paying him in roses. And in the daytime from out here, looking pretty good, I think. If that is like the style that I'm going to be putting my walls in, if I'm going to build all my walls in that kind of style, then that's going to be quite cool. <laughs> that was just a random arrow from a skelly that's been hiding out somewhere down here. Yeah, he's hiding out there looking in the water, stopping him burning. He'll, he'll disappear soon enough. Let's get out of here quick. Uh, so yeah, I've got this outside edge, which I can lend this design all the way around the outside build um, and down this side as well. I can have it going down there and lend this to that design and have an outside wall, wall off area like so. I kind of like it. I think I think it's um, it's been a work in progress. It took me about 16 attempts to get those lanterns kind of looking okay. Uh, there was just something missing up the top there. It just wasn't quite right. So I put lanterns all up around there. Now it feels like there's slightly too many lanterns. I really could do with some kind of like hanging basket type effect. But I don't know of any right now. Uh, but anyway, that is all we've got time for in today's episode, folks. So... Thank you all very, very much for watching today's episode of Minecraft 1.14.4. All the mobs, all the mods, and all the mobs, all the mods for uh, building my stables and finishing off some other bits and pieces for Plant Tech 2. Hope you've enjoyed. Leave a like, subscribe, don't forget the notification bell. I will see you in the next episode for some more. Goodbye.